Okay, Roger once again, Mud Fossil University, and I'm going to do it as I quite often do. I'm going to start at the end and show you how we got here. That is on Mars, and it is an iron meteorite, and it is a lung. Lungs contain iron. Kidney, um, hearts contain iron. Livers contain iron in copious quantities. That is also a lung, but this was on Earth. It did not come through space. You know, Roger, wow, what's a lung doing in space? I don't know, but I can tell you what. Every iron meteorite is biological, and I'm going to show you evidence that supports it unequivocally. Now, this was on the earth, and the guy died, or whatever it was, whatever creature, and the blood just ran off. Now, a lot of it stayed locked in here inside, and, you know, I've, I've looked at it very closely. We will, and we're going to look at everything in the microscope very shortly. And um, this is a little iron meteorite that I have here. It's, it's a small one, but it's, it's exactly the same, and when we look at it in the microscope, you're going to see all the blood and everything else. This was a lung. And as it comes through space, they pick up they pick up magnetism because the the iron which is in your blood becomes magnetized. It smelts. This is a this is a goose. This is not unique to human beings or to outer space or to lungs. It's it's a biological process, and it's called nucleophilic substitution. I know a big word, nucleophilic. Well, what does it mean? It means that whatever was here has to stay not stable to be alive. Not a single thing in your body is stable unless you have bolts and nuts and things like that in you. Everything in you is in a transition phase. It's given and taken molecules all the time. That's how life is. When you die, beep, it says, okay, what am I going to do now? It says, well, get stable. How do I do that? Well, you is you got to hook up with two of these over here and one of these over here and two down here, and then you're going to be okay. He says, well, where do I find those? He says, I don't know, search through the water that's coming through here. And then sooner or later, they lock in and they become stable. And then you have bones that look exactly like the bone. But you put that in a CAT scan, which we have done, and you won't see it individually as bone and this and that. You'll see a mass that has trans transitioned. Just like this, this is a heart. I'm almost certain it's a heart. And because it, because of the nature of the way things transition, it just specifically came, became a hematite. And I think this is the same thing. This is a lung, but in this can, this, and this is a lung. This has been certified human, too. So, and it's, that, that's where all the blood is in this one. Let me get this light over here. I mean, the thing is saturated with blood, the whole thing, and this thing weighs a lot. It's heavy. It's almost like solid iron with a really heavy-duty rubber bag, which is pleura. Now, we're going to look at the one that's on Earth, which is the Williamette meteorite. It's the same thing. It was a lung. It came through space. I'm going to tell you that right now. And, and you, it can be tested. It's right here on Earth. Mine can be tested. I'm not going to bother doing it anymore. I've tested everything. I have tested human, all this is, that's DNA tested. That's not cheap to do. I have two other giant humans that were DNA tested. Also not cheap to do. We've had CAT scans. But nobody seems to care that it, about the reality of this. And they walk around in circles, oh, I wish we could find life. I wish we could find life. And what they're in front of them is exactly what they're looking for. And their eyes are just too small to see. All right, now this is that Williamette meteorite, and it literally burnt off almost all the lower end biological molecules until it had to be up around 2,800, 3,000 degrees, somewhere around there. And then I, I believe it likely hit snow or ice or whatever and pretty much solidified quickly. You could see all these little ridges and everything, and all these little holes. It's exactly the same as you have here, identical. There's no question whatsoever this would do exactly the same thing. And, and, and it appears that this was the leading tip coming straight down, and it sort of boiled off that way. 
which would you know be more you know it's hard to say obviously this is but this is a lung that 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 i can guarantee you and that is saturated with blood this is a lung saturated with blood I've got them here, I've looked into them, I burned them all off and cooked them and checked them and looked at all the molecules and all the fibers. You see all these fibers in here? You see how dense it is with the fibers? I don't know if you can see that all that well, but you're going to see some stuff in the microscope though. I hope it will make sense to you. Now, that's the bloody tip that is what they call the interstitial latch. Boom, it latches down here, and the lung can float around a little bit, and it latches up here. And we're going to actually see the latch and the fibers. You see that round spot? No, you can't. There it is. See that round spot and the fibers coming out of it? Oh. That's where the top of the lung latches in. And that's what holds it in position. You float around, and you can jump back and forth. and. You know, do all the kind of things you do with your body, and then still come back to home, but home base. Okay, my friends, I know you can see what I see, and you can see those little crater spots and all those holes and all the little red looking bloody stuff here. And what do you see there? That is a meteorite that is on Mars, and it is iron. So, this was seen on the um, 2008. Uh, in 2008 from the uh, Curiosity rover, the earlier one. Now, let's look at what happens when you slice iron meteorites. And this is also an iron meteorite. I showed this, I know I showed it. It has a magnetism and all that. Now, let's see what they do. They crystallize because it's not just iron. It's all these transition metals. And when you heat them up to a certain temperature and then you chill them, they form crystal patterns, and I'll show it to you. And I think this is what happens with these iron meteorites. They quickly chill down when they impact whatever they impact, whether it's ice or snow or water or I don't know what, or even just coming through the atmosphere. And then don't forget, you can come through with the spin of the Earth, and that gives you an extra thousand miles an hour. You can come in against the spin of the Earth, and that throws a thousand miles an hour at you. You can come in on the side and sort of spin around, and I don't know, there's all kinds of ways that meteorites impact Earth. But I'm going to tell you right now, I haven't found one that's not biological that I, I could uh, that's what I found. And if anybody wants to show me something that says, oh, this is a meteorite and it's not biological, I'd like to see it. Now let me show you what happens that's inside of here. I'm going to show you blood in there. And this is a lung, so it's a little different, but they have meteorites and lungs, and they have them sliced, and we can see all the alveoli. But I'm going to show you either a heart or a liver, and it's going to have just the red and black blood, you know, artery and vein. And then all the patterns of crystallization is going to be fabulous. All right, this particular iron meteorite is cut, obviously, and... I don't know if they polished it or they just cut it, but you can see all these different crystallization patterns. And you see these basically different colors. Now, you, that is red, and that is really red. I don't know if you're going to pick it up in the camera or not. And that is black, and it is really black. And that is exactly the chemistry of mud fossils. The red hematite iron uh, in the arteries the FeO3 stays red. It goes into a powdery stage, yes. But when it is encapsulated like this, it really stays as normal. Now, FeO2, the two oxygen, two oxygens, changes. It's, it, that's a, a lot less stable, I guess, to be honest with you. I don't know. I haven't done the chemistry on the end result of this, but I believe it, it depends on pressure, temperature, time, the original components have started. There's a whole lot to mix into this to get to the end result. But I can tell you right now, this is all different types of metals that exist in this transition metal area. They all have, they're, they're transition metal compounds, they call them. And they all have their own colors. All right, I, I 
again got a little lost in this presentation, but this is transition metals do what is called a, a metal complex. And the metal itself, one of these metals, is the central core and then it has attachments that surround it which are able to interfere with other chemistry so that you can break and make other molecules. You can attach little bits here and there. And that is a hydrated transition metal ion. Anytime you see hydrate, it means you've got a lot of hydrogens. Look at all these hydrogens. They're all over the place. And hydrogens and oxygens are the things that do the transfer of molecules and bits and pieces. Now, the electrons are arranged around a nucleus. Uh, you don't care about any of that stuff. The, the, the key is you're going to see all these different colors in the metal crystals. This is interesting as hell, though. You know, and, and they had, they, they, they're close. They understand what happens. They just don't understand that that metal complex is not consists of, of, of a bunch of protons and so forth. It consists of 100% electrons just arranged in different formation, which makes a whole huge change in everything because it means anything can be anything. If anything can be anything, that's pretty important because right now you know people look at things and they say oh well, that's iron that's iron that's iron that's all it is it's iron no it's not it could be anything it could you could change that iron literally into hydrogen if you knew how to do it and i think there is ways to do this and i think i understand now how it can be done at least to some chemistry especially like in a range of these transition metals around copper and nickel and iron and all in this area, zinc, aluminum, it, it, there's a real flux of electron activity in that area which you end up with products if you can manipulate and that's all it is, is they're different arrangements of electrons so that's a whole other issue but the blood that's in here consists of all these different colors and that's why we saw those all these different colored crystals in that pattern. And Plato said that they used transition metals to coat the rings around Atlantis. And they glowed with the colors of the transition metals. I believe I read that. Could be wrong. You know, the great thing is a lot of the research has already been done. They just have to go back through it with different set of eyes. This is the Rosetta mission. Uh, where they landed a little craft on this comet 67P, Cheryankov, Cheryankov, some kind of name like that. This is a bundle of muscle fibers. Get any anatomist. Those are tendon fibers. This is a. It, it appears to be an um, Achilles tendon. Right, and I show this in pretty good detail exactly how it forms and how these jets shoot out and why they shoot out and all the astronauts in space you need the here's I have them on here these are those little bundles and um, this these are the same as these little pincher bundles here that are the muscle bundles and then you have the fibrils and the anchor and I have other ones here see I have the same little tendon fibrils here in the ones I have in my shop you see that they these are the tendon fibers they run into a, a, a gluey spot and then after that gluey spot it turns into muscle right there you see the gluey spot is here and then the muscle fibers come out and then they turn into these muscle fibers see so I've done a lot of research on this. I have every single detail on this. And all of these jets shooting out of here, see these, these are the spikes that hold it in. I showed the balls being held in uh, by at some tendon ripped out of some creature's gigantic creature's body. I cannot explain that. So don't just shut your mind off. These jet, jets are not dust. Those are cooking off little tiny blood vessels. Sometimes they go this way, that way up and down all on the same rock because they're all being heated in a different manner this is this this is the this, the structure of it the bone would have been coming up through the middle bones don't work out too good in these you know and I have the same thing here I have one here bones 
are the weak spot really blood is the strong spot that like I have the same exact same structure here and this is a, a meteor right here I have in my shop and it blistered off coming through and burnt off all of the organics surrounding these blood vessels right here this is right in my shop I, I have all this available for being tested so it's not like uh, it can't be verified one way or the other, but I'm going to tell you right now, you see these jets shooting this way and this way and that way and that way? That's because the sun is cooking the, the literally the, the blood and it's shooting out as these vapors. And the, the, the astronauts say when they come in from spacewalks, their suits smell like burnt metal and steak. And that is exactly what we're talking about, transition metals, not having the cheap oxygen down here to burn and combust, just gassing off. So they're smelling metal. They're actually literally smelling metal. And that's exactly what they say. All right, this goes back to 2002. She said it smells like um, kind of bitter kind of smell in addition to being smoky and burned. That's what she said in this interest, sulfurous smell. And another one, another guy said, uh, retired astronaut Chris Hadfield confirmed space does indeed smell like gunpowder burnt steak. That's a whole, it seems, it's a, sort of like brimstone as if a witch has just been there. And um, that's what they smell when they come in uh, and they take their suits off. Um, and they all say the same thing, it smells like burnt steak or or welding, some of them say it smells like welding fumes, and that's nothing more than gassing off metals which are in your blood, and they're gassing off of these objects in space due to the radiation. All right, I'm going to step into every realm with every single foot I have, which is two, War in the heavens. How did this stuff get in the heavens? These are bits and pieces of bodies. I don't care who says what. That's what they are. Okay, so you say, Roger, where did all these body parts come from space? Why is everything biological in space? I say, I do not know. There was a lot written about wars in space and things being chopped up and cut up and killed in space. It was, I don't know. I think we have to take a look at Revelations again and see maybe it already happened. I don't know. Because there is a gigantic dragon in North Africa that runs the whole top of North Africa. Check it out. Alright, I just want to make it perfectly clear. I have no specific agenda or religious affiliations. I want to have truth exposed and the universe appears to be biological, which throws Darwin into the trash heap. And it, these are the particles that were harvested on Comet 67P five, six, seven years ago. And they, you know, iron, 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 that's blood. Calcium, uh, I'm sorry, um, carbon, silicon, sodium. I'm sure they had, they could find all the other particles of life up there. I don't know exactly what they looked for, but here's the hydrocarbons. This is biology. It's not just dead dust that accumulated in outer space or things that happened from a big bang. It has the anatomy, it has the chemistry, it has the history. It's there. They're here. They can be tested. This is not something that is completely speculative. Where everybody else at this moment is 100% speculative. So, you take it from there. Thank you. I love you all.